a welcome back aubergine attempt since Spelunky 2. Um, haven't really had much success lately um, at all. If you're wondering why there hasn't been much Spelunky 2 lately, it's because I am punishing chat um, for... And, and the YouTube audience directly um, for not being uh, very nice about my big pizza slice idea. I really thought that... Okay, we're fine. I really thought that the big slice was going to be a... Uh, I thought it was going to be a hit. I thought people were going to be like, hey, that's a really good idea, because sometimes I don't want to eat a frozen pizza. Thought it was going to be a hit. It turns out it freaking sucks. But anyway, I got over it eventually. And uh, and we're back playing some Spelunky 2. Hoping against hope that the eggplant appears on this run. And then maybe we can make something happen with it, you know? I said, I, I gotta, because it's been so long. You get the eggplant by putting a present on the altar. You carry the eggplant to the ice caves, you sacrifice the eggplant on the purple altar, then you take what you get from that to world seven. That should work. I saw a girl on TikTok complaining about the frozen pizza the same way you did, so what she did was cut it in half and put the rest in the freezer. That's just like, um, you know, like, I get it, okay? She doesn't want to eat a whole pizza in a single sitting, she, so she doesn't want the temptation. Um, she only uh, wants half, but then you gotta preheat your oven two times. Oh, dude, don't even get me started on on cursed TikToks. Like, did you see the TikTok where the the ladies like, oh, my boyfriend got me this uh, pokey, but the chocolate is too sweet, and then she took she took the chocolate and like rinsed it all off under the sink so that she just had like the the wheat sticks. And then she was like, and now you've got a, a a snack that's just as delicious, but much healthier. And I was like, man, first off, as far as snacks food, snack foods go, you know, pokey is not that uh, bad for you to begin with. But on top of that, like, there was so many things to pull apart there. Oh, like, for example, uh, all the Europeans trying to understand why uh, Americans are calling chocolate sweet instead of, you know, how it actually tastes. <laughs> uh, like a whole, like lots of stuff. Anyway, um, and then on on top of that, like I was laughing because, well, let, let, first off, let me see what's going on in this shop. There was like another one where this and TikTok. You gotta remember, you know, you're dealing with like a younger audience for sure. Um, but there was a, a girl who was like, you know, let me show you what I learned in nutrition class last year, and then she cooked like a huge pan of ground beef um and then of course there's like you know beef fat in the pan right and then uh she goes look at this it's all fat and the fat is disgusting but check this out and then she just takes the uh oh, I'll, I'll ring the bell i'll ring the bell sorry um this is why it's nice to have chat around to keep me honest here she takes the beef she puts it into a colander and then rinses the the fat off of the beef. I know you're gonna say, NL, you misspoke. She she just drained the fat. No, she drained the fat, yes. And then she turned on her sink and and rinsed the meat, which is just like, I don't know, man. I don't even know what to say. Don't get me wrong. There's something like beef fat is like part of the main appeal of eating beef for me um but then like there's some things where like having that much fat can screw up like if you're making a pan sauce out of the beef or whatever like when you're making like like tacos with ground beef usually i i drain a little bit of the fat off just so it doesn't make the the taco sauce that you make in the pan kind of like too runny and fatty but the idea of of draining all of it and then also rinsing it is is truly wild to me but like rinsing rinsing your meat is like a a food trend uh now and it's not just a trend like i guess it's a cultural thing i was reading about it online the other day um but like there are there are people out there who who do like rinse off their their meat before they cook it it is and i read an article about it 
where like literally in the article they talk to scientists and the scientists are like you can rinse it off but it doesn't do anything and if anything if the meat is kind of like if it's contaminated to begin with rinsing it off in the sink is going to make your sink contaminated and is also going to uh possibly splash like contaminants around um and uh if if you just cook it, it cooks all that bad stuff out to begin with, so you don't even really have to worry about it. And then, like, everybody in the comments, it's absurd. Everybody in the comments is like, Y'all nasty! Y'all, if you don't rinse your- This guy's eating- th These people are out here eating unrinsed meat? Like, it's- it's- Despite what the scientists said in the article, they're like, you know, PhDs working at the FDA. They're like, my mom always washed her meat. If you don't wash your meat, you're nasty. Even though literally the FDA is like, it just makes it dirtier. It's just, it's just team sports to these people. They don't, they don't, they don't care about the evidence, man. Some, some foods you gotta wash. You know, you should wash your vegetables, obviously. People have said, what about rice? Well, when you wash rice, you know, you, you should wash rice. But you're not washing it to, to get rid of contaminants. You're washing it to get some of the starch off so that it, it cooks more properly, is the way that I would describe it, you know? You don't have to wash the rice. Like, if, if you're happier with starchier rice, then, then by all means. But, you know, you... you if, if you want, like, you know, restaurant quality rice, I've always, I've always washed mine. Let me put it that way. Anyway. Do you wash your potatoes? Depends on the context. If I'm gonna cook a potato with the peel on, like if I'm gonna cut a like a russet into wedges and leave the peel on, then yeah, I, I, uh, I wash the outside, scrape off like all the dirt and detritus. If I'm going to... Let's go, we got so lucky. If I'm gonna peel the potato anyway, then, no, I, I don't wash what's inside of the peel. Mother Nature, I always feel like, did that for me. Someone in chat said, I've always, uh... When I worked in the restaurant industry, I was always told to rinse rice until it ran clear. That is, that's also the rule I have been told. There's like two, uh, <laughs> two weird rules about rice. Rinse it until it runs clear, and then like, and I was always skeptical of this rule as someone who considers themselves more logical. Um, but Kate told me like, when you make rice, don't worry about like rice to water ratio, but instead just after it's rinsed, put the dry rice into the, the vessel and, oh, that was bad. Um, put your hand inside of it. I think we are gonna go hard on this. And you know, Add water until it's like up to your the second knuckle on your finger. And I, I don't know, man. You're gonna say like that doesn't make any sense. Why not just have like a ratio or whatever? I mean, I, I think if you could get the ratio, it's fine. But I also have to tell you that as far as like rules of thumb go, it works totally fine. Or first knuckle, maybe. I can't remember. I just know the way it feels. <laughs> It, the rice always comes out beautiful. Partly because, as well, we're using a rice cooker, but... <laughs> doesn't it depend on how much rice you use? I know, it, it, it doesn't make sense, okay? But it works. I'm sure there's some kind of magic behind it. Obviously, you'd, you'd probably want to change the rule if you were working with, you know, like... Like, five times the rice you were normally using. But if you're if you're making rice for, like... You know, one to four people, it works completely fine. How much rice do you pour in? People are going to be very upset. The answer is as, as much as you need. You, you, How much rice do you put in? Enough. And maybe even a little bit more than enough, but not too much more. <laughs> but then, like, if there's... If you can do rice... And it took me a while to learn this. You can do rice wrong in a, in a few different ways. The most obvious ways are you can make your rice uh, too dry or you can make it too wet. As long as it's cooked properly, my feedback for you is that too wet is much worse than too dry. 
too dry is usually fine. As long again, as long as it's not undercooked, so you're eating like, you know, weird crunchy rice. I would much rather eat like a super dry cooked rice than a uh oh, careful. A super uh, like over wet rice. That hurts. That hurt me. Anyway, that's that's my rice advice. I do love that video where the lady from the BBC makes fried rice and she like like every I'm not exactly a rice expert, but every rice faux pas is is in it like straining the rice with a colander and then rinsing it with cold water is just like just kind of like asinine. If you cook the rice properly, there shouldn't be any water to drain in the first place, you know what I mean? Like, because it all the water gets absorbed into the rice and then kind of like steamed out. If, if you find yourself having to drain the rice, you need to reduce the amount of water you put in next time and you need to cook it like a lot. I mean, they, like you don't really cook rice for like a length of time. You just cook it until uh, no water remains. Anyway, it's crazy. <laughs> Or yeah, just use a rice cooker as well, but... At least that's for short grain rice. I'm, I'm not a- I'm not a rice expert to begin with, but I... Don't know how it works for, like, long grain rice. I don't think I said real words there, but that's fine. You know what I was getting at. We don't need to get into the rice cooker discussion. Do you really need a rice cooker? Here's the thing. You don't need a toaster. You can just cook your toast, uh, you know, in the oven. Um, but you don't even need an oven. You could do all your kitchen work in a toaster oven. Oh, a toaster oven, Mr. Fancy. Like, I just have a hot plate, you know, and aluminum foil. You could do, like, people were cooking all, like, everything over, like, an open flame way back in the day. But, you know, for if you eat a lot of rice, a cheap rice cooker, in my opinion, is a great investment. Yes, you can cook it in a pot on the stove. It will be a quality of life improvement for you. To buy a rice cooker. You don't need a $400 Zojirushi Cuckoo rice cooker or whatever. You can just, you know. And you don't need to buy a rice cooker. Like, I don't work for Procter & Gamble or, or Black & Decker. Like, if, if, you know, I'm not trying to sell you. I'm not giving you an Amazon affiliate link to rice cookers or whatever. Like, you live your life. I'm just telling you I would recommend it. There are... Kitchen appliances I would not recommend. It, it depends on what you eat, obviously. But like, you know, a blender costs money, takes up space. I don't use it very often. The Instant Pot, if you, if you meal prep a lot, it's a beautiful device. If you, like, don't see yourself meal prepping, just use a pot on the stove, you'll be fine. Rice cooker, though, that's, that's one that I would vouch for. I would vouch for the rice cooker. Yeah, why, watch the tier list for more information. Exactly. There's very few uh, products that I will just, like, recommend you buy without considering your circumstances. Like, here's one. I, I've talked about this a few times before. Um, my wife always complained that when I shaved... Despite my best efforts, you know, little beard hairs would get, they'd go in the sink, whether you wash them out of the sink, and then, like, for the rest of the day, um, you know, whenever you walk around, you're, like, depositing little hairs everywhere, right? You know, the Tora QN, by the way. Thank you for the gift subscriptions. Thank you. Um, so, she found something online, and it's made by uh, a company called Remington. They're not going to eat my bow, right? Oh, even better. Um, it's like an electric... <clears throat> pardon me. It's an electric beard trimmer. But it has like a little vessel on it and almost like a... Uh, like a vacuum suck to some extent. Like a, like a little vacuum suck. And as you shave, it sucks the, the hairs into like this basin so that you don't deposit, like, 90% of the hairs are gonna end up in this basin. 10% are just kinda, like, gonna fly around no matter what, right? Um, and then you just empty the basin when you're done shaving. 
I, I would recommend it if you if you find yourself with the same problem. That's a device. I don't know. I think it was like thirty bucks. I, w I would recommend it uh, completely. Dude, I need paste. I got so confused when you said I just use a razor, <laughs> but it was spelled R A I S E R. I was like, a razor? What's what's a razor? Davinci? Hey, hey. We we gotta be a little cautious. I don't know. I might need to kill Kali on this one. That's honestly the luckiest play I've ever made in my life. <laughs> I don't know if you could if you could manufacture luck better than that, but that was pretty amazing. Okay, where the heck is this? Hey, hey, hey. We have no paste, which means we should be able to just do this. Dude, what a dunk. I don't think it's down here. Must be one level further? Forget the child of the forest for now. Beauty. Okay, get the child of the forest. Hello. Anyway. Um science or something. That's that's like one product that I'll recommend to, to everybody that has that same problem. You're still going to get hairs like everywhere, but you're going to have like such a lower percentage of them. To some extent, you don't need to remove all the hair. You just need to remove the ability for other people to see enough to get upset with you. <laughs> that's my take. Favorite brand that contains an ampersand? That's an interesting question. What's my favorite brand that contains an ampersand? Um, so you got like uh, Procter and Gamble. Oh, you know what? I gotta say, and again, I apologize. Like every corporation probably has, you know, some stuff that's questionable. I'm kind of like a. I I, I hope that this isn't something where you're like, well, in the '40s, you know, that they manufactured like biological weapons or something like that. But I feel like Johnson and Johnson, you know, they they make. Uh, consumer products and medicines and they're, they're working on some some covid vaccines and, and treatments and stuff like that who's gonna tell them <laughs> oh wait 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 we can get the eggplant here we can get the eggplant here but not take the boat which is totally fine johnson and johnson are s super screwed up oh man yo the stock does pay a nice dividend though Bruh, um, you can't take this through the door, so I guess I'm trying to think if there's a way out. I don't think there is. <laughs> so I think we'll just bust it. Oh, dude, that's really good, though. At least we got we got something out of it. Um, no bombs, huh? No, I'm not spending on the jetpack. I'm worried about the... I'm worried about bombs, but... I guess, like, honestly, we can just save our money. It's not a great shop. I mean, we, I, 8,000? We want a bomb box out of this, please? That's a terrible return on our investment. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. Do I read reviews before I buy stuff? Yeah, almost always. I'm a I'm a firm believer in uh, in in customer reviews to some extent. I think you always need to know, you know, you need to contextualize the customer reviews. Like I I just to be honest with you, I trust almost no one star reviews. Depending on the industry, you might consider this to be unfair, 
but I, I trust almost, like, for restaurants, I trust almost every five-star review, because I have a five-star experience at a restaurant all the time. That doesn't mean that it's a perfect experience, but as far as I'm concerned, it just means that I went to the restaurant, I ordered the food, I got it in a reasonable time frame, you know, and it, it tasted like I expected. That's like a five-star review to me. I'm not gonna give a local business, like, a four, just cause, like, well, I ordered a hamburger and they didn't give me free caviar. Like, I think that's, like, a weird, the customer is always right sort of, like, consumer fetishization, I guess, but, um... But a one-star review? I don't know, some of them are, like, you, you run the gamut on them, right? Like, you'll see customer, uh... Customer reviews that are one-star, that is, like, the customer's just insanely entitled, like... One urinal in the bathroom? One star! Or like, and as we saw in that segment on the, uh, on the NLSS, um, like, maybe six months ago, it was like, uh, you know, so many reviews were like, the cashier who barely spoke English was also very rude to me. And I'm like, I gotta be honest with you, you seem kind of rude. So I'm, I'm starting to wonder, like, who threw the first stone in that situation. Um, I'm not saying, you know, it's, there's never been a racist cashier at Tim Hortons or whatever. I'm just suggesting that I, I, I think that maybe if you've got 10 one-star reviews complaining about Tim Hortons uh, locations being racist, then, you know, maybe you're, you're seeing something that, that other people don't. But, you know, I'm not trying to discount the experience of this straw man that I literally just invented. Um... Okay, I can't whip you there. Just give me one sec. Probably gonna have to rope you. But I... I mean, no, I, I honestly... I don't agree with the reasoning that, like, two to four star reviews are the only legitimate ones. Like, I think... I think a lot of five star reviews are extremely legitimate. I, it just depends on your definition of five star. Right? Like, I'm, I'm kind of losing my mind at the people who are like, you know, if I got what I expected from a restaurant, I'd give it a four star. Like, it really? Like, what do you... You're not, you're not reviewing, like, movies for best picture. Oh, I, I did get a little scared there. 2.6 stars is average? It's not, though. Like, if you look at businesses on Google, like... Probably the average review for a for a restaurant is like in the high threes or the low fours. So as soon as you're giving out like fours for good service, like you're an enemy of, of the of the business as far as I'm concerned. Love it. I'm 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 trying to get this guy to waste his bombs so I don't uh, waste my bombs. Like, if I, if I saw a 2.6 star restaurant on Google reviews, I would not be like, oh, an average restaurant. I would be like, yo, that place probably sucks. <laughs> I'd be like, they screwed up badly. Like, I, there, there's some, like, three restaurants. I go, like, some, like, if I see a restaurant, like, a 3.2, there are times that I go, like, wait a minute, like, why does this restaurant that we love have such bad ratings? And then sometimes, like, the reviews are like, it's dirty. And I'm like, yeah, you're not eating off the floor. Just shut up and eat your soup. Like... Okay, now, am I ready for this? I think we're ready for this. We've, we've been over this before. But I think that there is, like, um... You have to have some solidarity, if that makes sense. Especially, like, in the gig economy. When when we ordered a lot of delivery, um, I, I talked about this, and, and a lot of people agreed with me, and a lot of people had, like, problems with it um, as well. But I really feel like if... Like, uh, if you have a delivery from DoorDash, and, like, it's what you ordered, and it arrives roughly like within plus or minus 15 minutes within the delivery window, um, you kind of like, you owe them five stars. 
Like if you, what do you expect? Like they're going to give you like a complimentary, uh, like fun size chocolate bar when they drop off the food that you tasked them to get. Like, I'm not saying you can't give bad drivers bad reviews, but I'm saying anything in my opinion within the, within the realm of acceptability should be treated as a five star. For the gig economy. Now, for for restaurants, no, I don't believe that. Like, my fives... If I were to review restaurants, I would probably give out, like, at least, like, two-thirds of my reviews would be five stars, probably. You know, you're not writing for Food Weekly. You're not... You're, you're just giving a review on Google that's like, yeah, this, is, this restaurant gets, like, a seal of my approval. Um, but I, I think you gotta be, like, kind of like a... A bit of an a-hole, <laughs> for sure, in order to give, like, three stars to a DoorDash driver. Like, what, what's your reasoning for giving three stars? Like, either the order is good or is bad, right? Like, and uh, oftentimes when the, when the order is bad, it's not even the driver's fault. Inevitably, sometimes it is, but they forgot your food? That's not three stars. That's a one-star review. Or like a no review, but you, I, I feel like you would be justified giving them one star there, yeah. Being super late. Sometimes that's, you know, the driver's fault, admittedly, and sometimes it's the, it's the restaurant's fault. I feel like if my, if my food arrived late, but it was warm, I just wouldn't review the driver. If my food arrived late and cold, like they've had it for a bit, but they pro it seems like they've been like walking around or taking their sweet time, then then maybe I'd be more inclined to give them not as nice of a review, but... Like it's kind of the same with like an Uber driver. I don't know if I've ever given out a one, but like I pretty much, you know, anytime I've been in an Uber, I'm like, I'm giving you five stars or if I feel like at any point during the ride I'm gonna die, they go give me five stars, and I go, yeah, man, sure, and then I just get out of the car and I never, I never do it. Again, like if you're if you're writing for you know, like if you're writing movie criticism for the New York Times or whatever, yeah, I don't think you should give every movie five stars. But if you're reviewing, like, your local Dunkin' Donuts, and you, you're like, you know, oh, they didn't impress me that much. I'm like, get, get over yourself. What the heck's going on over there? <laughs> Dude, I love the Pitcher's Mitt Plus gambling. I don't know why I said it's so weird. <laughs> Just feels so much more satisfying to throw the dice like this. What if the driver coughs into your food? I mean, I feel like these are obvious questions you can answer for yourself. If the driver, like, openly coughs into your food, you give them a one star. And probably, like, report them. That's not what you're gonna... Oh, uh, yeah, the food was hot, but the driver uh, coughed at it in the middle of a global pandemic. That's a three. Like, are you... Have you lost your mind? Are you stupid? <laughs> not to be rude, but, like... <laughs> I don't understand where the where the method like you can construct the thought experiment it's fine but like at least have it within the bounds of realism you know what i mean what if the driver like uh, uh punched you in the face yeah i I'd, I'd you know contact the company and give him a one star i wouldn't be like oh but he had a smile on his face when he did it, so according to the reviews of objectivity, a smile is plus one, and physical violence is a minus two, so... You know... Just... Just a heavily weird energy. Okay. We're going. I will not be poisoned. Okay, I'm not, I'm not answering any more what-if questions, because they're obviously manufactured insanity. I refuse to be baited. This floor is Excalibur. Okay. Oh, this... But if there's an altar, this floor is also present. Frick. What if Levy won his chess match right now? Dude, I'm... I, I wasn't watching, but I saw that chess... Uh, Batcom posted a tweet that was like, you know... 
Here's here's how the game went, and I saw that he won on time, and I was oh, I'm so stupid! I just floated right into it. <laughs> It's all right. We, we still can do the aunt skip. Although we did lose our cape, which is an extreme bummer. Um, we can still try, though. Yeah, okay, and then we're poisoned as well. Um, so this is, this is a three-star run right here. We can get over the poison. Getting over the poison is easy enough. And we can still take Excalibur. Our cape! Oh my god. Whatever. If you want to poison me, go ahead. We got so much like potential HP if we want it. So forget the gift for now. There's a chance here. And, you know, kind of one of the like. I hate to call it, like, a nice thing. But one of the things that's not so bad about, um... Losing your Ankh is you don't have to, like, drop anything. You know? Because if the Ankh skip fails, your run's just toasted no matter what. You don't really have to, like, leave Excalibur behind. <laughs> you just kind of, like, go for it. Although... No, I think it's fine. Anyway, yeah, I'm just like, I don't even necessarily want you to give out more five-star reviews. I just feel like, the, like for businesses, I feel like if you give out a three, you're kind of like, like I have an opinion on you. I really feel like it should go to like, uh, I'm so stupid. 